increase the blood to the network of two, we call them the vasculature. And if you're normal, the heart is located inside your thoracic cavity, between the lungs and the region called the mediastinum, deep to your sternum. And uh, notice the heart is deflected to the left with most people. There's a notch taken out of the left lung called the cardiac notch, where the pointing portion of the heart, called the apex of the heart, uh, rests. Which means the left lung is slightly larger, slightly smaller, excuse me, than your right lung. Something to keep in mind if you plan on donating a lung. Given it's smaller too. <clears throat> the heart rests on this muscle called the diaphragm, which is actually the pump that the aim the air into and out of the lungs. But the heart itself is a pump, a pump that moves the blood. If we open up the heart, <clears throat> there are three distinct layers to the wall of the heart. The outer layer is a membrane called the epicardium, also known as the visceral pericardium. Below that is a thick layer of muscle, and the heart is called the myocardium. My, of course, means muscle. Cardia means heart, the muscle of the heart. And then on the internal surface of the heart, we have the endocardium. Which is this uh, kind of tissue and epithelium. I want to focus right now on the myocardium, the thickest part of the wall of the heart, and the part that actually contracts to generate the force that moves the blood through the vasculature. The myocardium wraps around the chambers of the heart so that when it contracts, it contracts kind of like your hand squeezing a sponge squeezing the fluid out of the sponge. So when the heart contracts, because it's composed of chambers that are filled with blood, the wall of the heart contracts like your hand squeezing on a sponge, thereby pushing the blood out of the chambers into the arteries. See how my cardiac is swirled around those chambers. We have a four-chambered part. We have two receiving chambers called atria. The singular is atrium. There's the right atrium that receives blood from uh, so-called systemic organs, which basically means all the organs of the body except the lungs. And then over here we have the left atrium, which receives blood from your lungs. Atrium is from a Latin word meaning greeting area in ancient Rome. The atrium is the area where you greeted guests, for example. And the atria of the heart is where the heart greets the blood, welcomes the blood back. The blood then moves on into the ventricles, which are the main pumping chambers of the heart. Ventricle means little belly. The right atrium moves blood into the right ventricle. The left atrium moves blood into the left ventricle. When the ventricles contract, the blood then is ejected out of the heart into the arteries. The ventricles are the main pumping chambers of the heart. The atria do contract, but their contraction is not essential for the movement of the blood into the ventricles. What's essential, though, is the contraction of the ventricles. That's what moves the blood out of the heart, through the organs, and ultimately back to the heart. Well, let's have a review, okay? The heart is really two pumps fused into one organ. We think of it as one pump because the two pumps work simultaneously. But it's really two pumps fused together. There is the right pump, shown in blue, also known as the pulmonary pump because it pumps its blood to the lungs, and then there is the left pump, usually
usually called the systemic pump, known because it pumps its blood to all the other organs of the body except the lungs, organs that are referred to as the systemic organs. So, the right and left atria receive blood simultaneously. They move blood into the ventricle simultaneously. The two ventricles contract simultaneously. So, from the surface of the body, it seems like it's just one pump. But in reality, it's two pumps, the pulmonary and systemic pump, fused together in this one organ. Or another way of looking at the heart is it's two pulsating blood vessels fused together. I mean, you know, before the heart, there were pulsating blood vessels. Well, I'm going to do something that I really regret now. I'm going to rip your heart apart. I'm going to break your heart. It's happened many times, right? Yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> but, <laughs> nevertheless, to illustrate that the heart is really two pumps in one, I've split it in two, the left heart and the right heart. Notice the left heart receives blood from the lungs, and then it pumps the blood to all the other organs of the body. Your brain, your skeletal system, your liver, your digestive tract, and so on. In those organs, what happens is that the carbon dioxide is given off to the blood, a waste gas, and molecular oxygen is picked up by the blood. Systemic organs, carbon dioxide, which is a waste product, is added to the blood, and molecular oxygen is taken out of the blood, where it's used in the organs by the mitochondria to make ATP. Then the blood returns to the heart, but this time it returns to the right side of the heart, the pulmonary pump, so named because it pumps blood to the pulmons, the lungs. In the lungs, the reverse of gas exchange occurs from what occurred in the other organs. In the lungs, carbon dioxide is taken out of the blood and blown off to the atmosphere. Molecular oxygen is taken out of the atmosphere and added to the blood. And then the blood returns to the heart, this time to the left side of the heart, the systemic pump, and it's pumped back to the systemic organs where the reverse of gas exchange occurs. Oxygen taken out of the blood, carbon dioxide added to the blood, and then it's back to the heart, but this time to the right side of the heart. You can see here why the two pumps, the left and the right pump, or the systemic and the pulmonary pump, pump essentially the same volume of blood each minute. Because ultimately, they pump to each other. The right heart pumps to the left, the left heart pumps to the right. So if the output of one increases, that means the input of the other is going to increase, which allows its output also to increase. So over a period of like a minute, the output of the right heart is essentially the same as the left heart. So we have one long circuit here with two pumps in the circuit, with the two pumps actually fused together in one organ and working simultaneously. 